Hey you guys, Twin Gemini here with A Wall Gaming. NFL Week One is in the books, and now we are going to look at Week Two predictions. Let's go. All right, first primetime game. We got the Bengals at the Browns. A couple of things for the Bengals. Joe Burrow did not look like his LSU self last week. Uh, let's see if he can do it against the Browns defense. Lamar Jackson had a good good game. Let's see. Uh, my next thing is um, Zach Taylor uh, identity. With the Rams, the Rams offense looked phenomenal. Uh, he goes to the Bengals. With Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton gets hurt. He didn't look good anyways. Then you, they just don't look good. He goes ahead. He gives Joe Mixon a big contract, and then he fumbles last game. Uh, they got to figure out what they're doing here. Are they passing? Are they throwing? Or are they running? I said passing and throwing, but who knows? Um, next is injuries and playmakers throughout the season. AJ Green's back. And of course, Mixon's out there. Uh, Boy's out there. Hopefully, they don't have injuries, and this team could always go maybe six and ten. Yeah, always. That's what I think. But on the Cleveland side, <laughs> Baker playmaker or are you a turnover maker? Who knows? Cleveland already wants a new quarterback <laughs> from the looks of it. Uh, he looks thinner. He just needs he just needs to make plays, and he's not doing that right now. But is it because the offense has too many stars? And I believe that's a that's a could be a reason. Uh, who am I getting the ball to? You have Hunt, you have Chubb, both getting the ball, and none of them are really doing anything. If you give the ball to one guy, he would have had 140 yards last game, and actually that might be better. Who knows? So with the Browns, focus on defense. We need to focus on defense is the key if we're the Browns here. Um, you score six points, and you let the team score 38. Miles Garrett needs to come alive. These guys need to spark up their defense in order to compete. But between the Browns and the Bengals, this should be a good game. I got the Cleveland Browns edging out the Bengals here 30-24. to 24. Joe Burrows, I'm thinking 290, two interceptions with two touchdowns. Mixon bounces back, 108 yards with a touchdown, probably around 58 receiving yards. Uh, I got T, T. Higgins here. All right. I went with Green last week. Not doing it this week. <laughs> 73 yards for Higgins with a touchdown. Defensively, I'm going to watch Hubbard. Uh Maybe he could get through Triss. Uh, I know their their tackles look their tackle play looked a little rough last week, so let's see if they could get to the Baker. And then three sacks and interceptions for their defense. I'm predicting on the Brown side, 284, two touchdowns and interception. Uh, Chubb give the ball to him, 127 yards, two touchdowns. Hopefully it's not Hunt, and I'm not wrong again. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. I think he should have a good game this this week. 98 yards with a touchdown. If not, of course, Landry will be in the mix. Uh, Denzel Ward, I'm watching him. He's going to be a matchup against Green. That's why I'm going with Higgins. Uh, but four sacks and two interceptions for the Browns defense. I have a high scoring. Maybe it might not be. Maybe it might be 10 to 6 again. Something low, but we will see. All right, we have the Denver Broncos at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going with the Broncos here, 20 to 14. Drew Locke, 281, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Melvin Gordon is going to be the starter now with Philip Lindsay's injury, 57 yards, 73 receiving with a touchdown. Uh, Cortland Sutton, I know he's questionable, but I, I hope I'm right here, 76 yards with a touchdown. Uh, defensively, I'm watching AJ Johnson against the Steelers' running game. I'm going. Three sacks, interception, and a fumble for that defense. On the Steelers side, I know they're home, but Ben Roethlisberger, 253, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, Snell was the running back of the week last week. Shocks me, uh, but I'm going with Connor, 95 yards and one touchdown. Juju Smith, Schuster, going 88 yards with a touchdown. Hayward's the defender to watch here. Two sacks for the Steelers, but they get edged by the Broncos, 20-14. to 14. 
All right, our next game, we got the Carolina Panthers going to Tampa Bay. I believe Tampa Bay will edge us out 35-24. to 24. Bridgewater, 303 yards, two touchdowns and a reception. McCaffrey, I'm going 104 yards with a touchdown, 82 yards receiving. DJ Moore is the receiver watching this game, 88 yards with two touchdowns. Uh, I'm going to watch Burns again on defense. He had a bad week last week, but let's see, um, especially with the running game on Tampa Bay looking looking off. Let's see if he can do something. Uh, two sacks, no interceptions for that defense. Tampa Bay side, Tom Brady finds his inner Tom Brady. 307, three touchdowns with no interceptions. Uh, Fournette, I think he gets involved. 87 yards with two touchdowns. Mike Evans, get him involved as well. 109 with one touchdown. I'm going to watch White again. Uh, he had a good game last week. Defensive side. Let's see if we can do it again uh, with McCaffrey at running the ball here. Uh, three sacks, interception, and also I think they force a fumble. Tampa Bay again, 35-24. to 24. All right, the San Francisco 49ers versus the New York Jets. I got the Niners winning big here. 45-17. to 17. Garoppolo, big day, 344 yards, four touchdowns, no interception. Mostert, I'm going 82 yards, 37 receiving with a touchdown. Even though he led the team in receiving last week, I'm going with George Kittle. 108 yards, two touchdowns. He should play. I feel like he's a strong guy, even though he's questionable. Richard Sherman, six sacks, two touchdowns, and I think the defense pulls off an interception. On the New York Jets side, Sam Darnold, 204 yards with a touchdown and two interceptions. Frank Gore, 51 with a touchdown. Jamison Crowder here, 88 yards with a touchdown. Defensively, I'm watching May. And then two sacks for that defense, but they get they get handled 45-17. to 17. Next, we got the shocking team of the week for me, Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Tennessee Titans. Titans last week, as we've seen, kicking issues. Jaguars shocking. Uh, but I got the Titans winning here 21 to 10. Minshew 207 yards with a touchdown and interception. Robinson 51 yards. DJ Chalk here with 66 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, I'm, I'm going to watch CJ Henderson uh, against Brown. Um, I think the Jaguars only pull off one sack. Titans, Tannehill, we got 296, two touchdowns, no interceptions again. Uh, Henry, I think, pulls off 128 yards with a touchdown. A.J. Brown does well against Henderson, 112 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, I'm going to watch Davion Clowney, see if he could stop Minshew from extending plays. Four sacks, two interceptions, and a fumble. I believe they do. All right, the New York Giants versus the Chicago Bears. I got the Bears winning this one here. 24 to 21. Daniel Jones, 216 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Saquon Barkley gets going a little bit. 86 yards, a touchdown, 41 receiving. Slayton's the receiver to watch again. 67 yards with a touchdown. Defensively, I'm going to be watching Leonard Williams to see if he gets any pressure on Trubisky. I think they'll pull off two sacks, an interception, and a fumble. Uh, Trubisky, 238 yards, two touchdowns. He does throw an interception, but a pretty decent game for him. I'm going Terry Cohen uh, this week, 64 yards with 58 receiving. Allen Robinson talk was he was upset about the offense. I think they get him involved here. They listen to him. 89 yards, two touchdowns. Defensively, I'm going to watch Khalil Mack again. Had no impact on last week's game. I think he does here. Five sacks, two interceptions. For the Bears winning 24-21. We got the Los Angeles Rams at the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles were stunned last week, but I think they pulled off here 23-20. Jared Goff, 244 with two touchdowns and an interception. Brown, I'm going with 96 yards. Cooper Cup comes up big, 79 yards with two touchdowns. Watch Aaron Donald. Defensively, always a hassle. Three sacks and an interception for the Rams. Wentz, I think he does better. He... Throws three touchdowns with an interception. Miles Sanders, hopefully he plays. I got him 84 yards. Uh, Zach Ertz, the one to watch this week. 82 yards, two touchdowns. Brandon Graham, defensively. I'm going the Eagles. Four sacks, two interceptions. Also, I think they force a fumble for the Eagles 23-20. to 20. 
All right, next we got the Minnesota Vikings versus the Indianapolis Colts. Both of these teams coming off a loss. Vikings losing to the Packers and the Colts losing to the Jaguars. But I got the Colts winning here 24 to 21. Kirk Cousins, 218, two touchdowns. Cook, 91 yards with a touchdown. Thielen with 81 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, I'm going to watch Eric Kendrick, see if he can stop the Colts one game. Uh, two sacks for that defense. On the Colts side, I've got Phil Rivers recorrecting himself. 270 with two touchdowns and no interceptions. Jonathan Taylor running the ball this week. Hopefully more. 77 yards with a touchdown. T.Y. Hilton, 109 yards, two touchdowns. Defensively, I'm going to watch Xavier Rhodes, see if he plays well against his former team. Got the Colts with three sacks. Next, the Lions at the Green Bay Packers. The Lions winning the first half and then losing to the Bears initially. The Packers, of course, being the Vikings pretty handily, so I think the Packers are going to win here 30-21. to Stafford, 254, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Adrian Peterson has another good day. 90 yards with a touchdown. Uh, Kenny Galladay, I know he's questionable. Hopefully he plays 62 yards with a touchdown. And Desmond Trufant is the one to watch on defense. And then two sacks for that defense. No interceptions. On the Packers side, Aaron Rodgers continues at 348 with four touchdowns. Jones gets a little more involved. 59 yards with a touchdown. Devontae Adams, again, keeps it up. 135 yards, two touchdowns. Zadarius Smith, the one to watch against Peterson. I'm going three sacks and two interceptions for the Packers defense, 30 to 21. We got the Falcons versus the Cowboys. Uh, Falcons, we see their high powered offense. I think it continues. 312 for Matt Ryan, two touchdowns and an interception. Gurley comes alive, hopefully. 80 or 98 yards, one touchdown. Julio Jones at 118 yards, still no touchdowns for him. I know he struggles with that. And then Keon O'Neill defensively, um, three sacks, two interceptions, and I think they were forced a fumble as well. On the Cowboys side, we got Dak Prescott, 328 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Ezekiel Elliott, I'm giving him the ball more, 128, two touchdowns. Cooper has another good day, 106 yards with a touchdown. Watch the Marcus Lawrence, if he can get to Matt Ryan. I know Aldon Smith did it last week. It was a was a struggle. Hopefully Lawrence can. Four sacks and an interception for the Cowboys as they win 24-21. Next, we have the Buffalo Bills versus the Miami Dolphins. The Bills coming off a win last week, and they're going to handle the Dolphins this week, 27-10. I'm going Josh Allen, 288, two touchdowns. And I'm going to say he's going to run the ball again, 48 yards, one touchdown. I do led the team in rushing last week. Uh, watch John Brown. I think he's going to pull off 58 yards and a touchdown. Edmonds is the defensive player to watch. Two sacks and two interceptions for the Bills. On the Dolphins side, they start Fitzpatrick, and again, it's a bad call. 168 yards with two interceptions. Uh, Gaskin was the run back last week. Will go, even though they pay two people, but 61 yards with one touchdown. Devontae Parker pulls off 74 yards. I'm going to watch Brian Jones again um, against Stephon Diggs. And then one sack for the Dolphins. Washington football team versus Arizona Cardinals. Both of these coming away with the win last week. Uh, Haskins, I'm going 185, a touchdown and two interceptions. Gibson, 60 yards. Uh, McLaurin, McLaurin, 62 yards, one touchdown. Defensively, I'm going to watch Kendall Fuller against Hopkins. I'm going four sacks and an interception for them. On the corner side, Murray, 208 yards, three touchdowns with an interception. I'm going 68 yards rushing. Uh, Kenyon Drake, 78 yards, no touchdowns for him. Fitzgerald, I think, comes away here, 65 yards, two touchdowns. Buda Baker is the guy to watch on the defensive side. And we're going two sacks and two interceptions for the Cardinals, 27-13. 
probably one of the most interesting games of the week, the Ravens versus the Texans. But watching the Texans last week, I got the Ravens winning 27-14. to Jackson, 237, two touchdowns. Interception is 57 yards rushing. Dobbins, 93 yards with a touchdown. Uh, Brown, I'm going 97 yards with a touchdown. Going to watch Marcus Peters on defense uh, just because I feel like Brandon Cooks can do anything last week. Uh, Fuller was the one that really did it, so we'll see where Peters is at. Uh, four sacks and interception for the Ravens defense. Deshaun Watson, I'm going 207 yards, one touchdown, one interception. It looks like they're running the ball more, so David Johnson didn't impress me last week. Once. 107, one touchdown. Uh, Kenny Stills, I think, is the one to watch here uh, at the slot receiver. 86 yards with a touchdown. Uh, Watt needs to put pressure on Jackson. Two sacks in an interception, but again, they lose to the Ravens. Next, we got the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Chargers. Chiefs, of course, showing us they can handle the Texans. I think they'll handle the Chargers 30 to 14. Mahomes, 327, three touchdowns and interception. Elair continues his good streak, 89 yards with one touchdown. Travis Kelsey, 128 yards, two touchdowns for him. Uh, I'm watching Shardavious Ward against Keenan Allen. I think Allen still gets shut down here. Three sacks and two interceptions for the defense. On the Los Angeles Chargers side, we got Tyrod Taylor, 80. 181 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. I don't think he does much. Eckler, I'm going 48 yards and a touchdown. KJ Hill, uh, the slot receiver, 57 yards, one touchdown. And watching Corey Harris defensively to see if they stop the high prolific pass offense of the Chiefs. And then one sack and an interception for them. Next primetime game, we got New England Patriots at the Seattle Seahawks. Listen, the Patriots come away with the win against the Dolphins, and what it shows us is the Dolphins are still the Dolphins of that division. But Patriots, Cam being Cam, all right? If he can pass the ball efficiently, not turn the ball over, and still be able to run and not get hurt, this offense looks looks pretty intense. They look like they can do some stuff. Uh, and I call out balanced offense, even when they had Tom Brady. When they had the balanced offense, they were the best. They were able to run the ball with both running backs, Sony Michelle and White, and get somebody else in there somehow and still make make a big deal out of it. But if you're only getting 25 yards, if you're Michelle and, and White, that's not good. But can be can, man. Uh, defense is so strong. I keep thinking, what if the Bills never trade is Stephon Gilmore? They would have Tredavious White and Stephon Gilmore. That would be a heck of a defense. But he's with the Patriots, and they lead that pretty well defensively. Looks like nobody can pass if your name's Ryan Fitzpatrick. But we'll see. On the Seattle side, and we will see, it's dangerous Russell Wilson, which looks better than ever. I mean, he looks like he's coming off last year still. Um, we'll see how he throws against his strong defense. Where's the running game? And I question that because they need to find it. Chris Carson coming off a dang, like a bad hip injury, and I understand that. And they had Marshall and Lynch. They had all these guys come from nowhere and try to play again. But they need to get that going. I know they got Carlos Hyde in there. He's not a bad running back, but they need to find it. And then defensively, they need to have a pass rush this game. If they're not forcing Cam to make turnovers or quick decisions, he Patriots can can still put up points. So we will see. Should be a good game. I got the Seahawks winning this game though, 28 to 21. Cam Newton, 208 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I don't have him as efficient as he was last week. 59 yards for Michelle. Edelman, 55 yards and a touchdown. Devin Cordy, the one to watch here. I think they get one sack and force a fumble. On the Seattle side, I believe Russell Wilson, 257, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Chris Carson comes alive here, 146 yards, two touchdowns. Watching Josh Gordon receive it wise because he used to play for the Patriots, so why not go with him? 79 yards, one touchdown. Bobby Wagner defensively, I'm going one sack and two interceptions for the Seahawks as they win 
28 to 21. All right, we got the New Orleans Saints versus the Las Vegas Raiders in their new home location. Thing about the Saints is that Michael Thomas is hurt. Uh, I think it's for three weeks they're saying. I'm, I'm indifferent if it hurts their offense or not. They still have offensive weapons. We seen Jared Cook last week. You got Emmanuel Sanders. They do stuff with Taysom Hill. Um, they got Kamara. Uh, as long as he's involved. And better than last week. I mean, he didn't really do too much. He got that deal. Maybe that will spark something to get him more involved and make this offense more dangerous. And then the next thing, Drew Brees being imperfect. As we've seen, he doesn't need to be perfect anymore. He's not. He didn't throw for 400 yards like we're used to seeing, which shocked shocked me. Um, but the the consistency is what is needed. The defense, I feel, is what makes the Saints team right now. If they're able to hold that defensively throughout the season, they'll be okay. But um, with with Thomas Hurd and Kamara not doing as well, but they need to get it fi fixed in order to have the tremendous year it looks like they could have. Next, Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, my big question is still Derek Carr. No interceptions. Not saying that. But how... Can they make the offense off of just Jacobs? Because this guy, Jacobs, he, he was hurt last year. And he's got hurt before in college. So, we've seen him run the ball tremendously well. Which I feel like they can do. But how do they take that offense to the next level? And it goes through Derek Carr. If they don't trust him, we're not going to see it. And we'll see Las Vegas next year. But... Next thing, they need to put pressure on Breeze. I talked to him about being imperfect. Make him imperfect, right? Uh, especially with the offense the way it is. You need. It might be a low-scoring game. It might not be, but that's the best key to the Raiders winning here. And I got the Saints winning 33-14. to Drew Breeze, guess what? He's perfect. 338 yards, three touchdowns. Kamara comes alive. 137 yards, touchdown, 55 receiving. Samuels picks up the sack for Thomas, 67 yards with a touchdown. Watch Cameron Jordan, two sacks and two interceptions for the defense, as it proves my Derek Carr theory. 196, one touchdown, two interceptions. Jacobs has a good game, though. 121, one touchdown. Waller, the tight end, 86 yards. Defensively, watch Arnett, because he's going to be against who knows who. So I feel they will be exploiting that one sack for this defense as the Saints handle the Raiders. All right, guys, top performers for this week. If you guys watched last week, my top performers were garbage. So hopefully not this week. I got it. Pat, Aaron Rodgers, and Jimmy G, the quarterbacks to watch. Running back, Kamara and Chris Carson. Devontae Adams and George Kittle. And then the defensive side. The Tennessee Titans and the New Orleans Saints, I believe, are going to be top performers for the week. In future weeks, keep an eye out for week two corrections to see if I messed up as bad as I did in week one. And week three, already the NFL season going by quickly. But I hope you enjoy your day. I'm Twin Gemini with AWOL Gaming. Thanks for watching and have a good one.